actually forgot what question. Oh, no, there's a bunch of stuff on here I can't pronounce. So we'll just start with this is John Meta, which I can say. You're at Metador on Twitter. Metador. Hydrasi. And Hydrasi on Twitter. Just so, saying. So it's also Hydrasi on Twitter? Yes. Okay, did well, I say it right? Well, that's the company. Yes, Hydrasi. Oh, Got I thought it. I was going to get that wrong. I went through a lot of time and money to choose a username or a company name that was intuitive that mm -hmm. people would automatically pronounce. And like a groomer for snacks. Psst, I can't. <laughs> did you think I wouldn't see it and remember? No, I actually Look wrote it on the card. The card. Oh, did you? I'm not allowed to have the card. The the whole po the whole point of me coming here is to make you try to say that on camera. So try it again. Good for full. Wait, hold on. Grim. I can't. Say it. <laughs> <laughs> Say it for me. Grim Fuckle Snacks. Are you going to. I swear you snuck an obscenity in there, man. I swear you did. <laughs> Say it again. I want to see if it sounds the same the second time. Grim Fuckle Snacks. You did. You said a bad word. <laughs> yeah. All right, John. What are you doing that made you stop blogging and posting on Twitter? I have missed your tweets, man, and and your blog posts. I know it's very bad. Have you been working? Yes. Have someone been paying you? No. Okay. See, and this is the problem. As long as you're not making any has money, it's okay. Has someone been whipping you <laughs> <laughs> with bacon? <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Good times. Good times. Yeah. Um, lately, I've been working on a company in environmental data called Hydrasi, and it's sucking my Twitter ability, sadly. Are you at least making the world a better place? Well, that's the idea. Yeah. I can yeah. accept that you're not on Twitter as much yeah. if you're making the world a better place. That's the idea. Either that or just control it all. Yeah. Yeah from one central location with 52 screens on the wall. Diabolical. Yeah, yeah. World domination. You know, I haven't, I haven't decided which way I'm going to go yet, whether it's going to be the, you know, benevolent dictator or the evil dictator. You could convince the world that you're a benevolent dictator, but actually be. Oh, good. Do you have a pen? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Cal, he needs a pen. He's going to take notes. I'm really good. At this I'm trying whole. to figure out which kind of dictator. Yeah, no, no. Uh, the only way Thank to go is to be I'm evil and to... Um, have people assume that you're never. That's right there, really right. just. Two words, John. Yeah. E underground layer. No, 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 not Evil, underground. E not underground. No, no, no. Is that they Evil? always go. They always go for the underground layer. That's if you want Evil. to appear benevolent, you need to have like the. Uh, evil overlord so that you can say I'm Lord I'm looking I'm just looking after all of you like Barack Obama I'm keeping you all nice and safe oh, here we go. <laughs> so did you see that there was an underground lair for sale did you guys see that a few oh, months ago I want to do my podcast in London. from it yeah it was an old um, it was an old tunnel in London so cool it yeah. comes with a white cat <laughs> Dr. Claw <laughs> we'll deliver it yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a hosting center yeah. Oh, I have to. I actually do have to try to say it. How many people have you sold on? Grimfockle snacks. Grimfockle snacks. Grim, but he's. I have to. I have to do it. Grim. Without. Grim. Fockle. You changed it that time. No. Grim, Grim fockle. fockle snacks. <laughs> snacks. Yes. Okay. Grim fockle How snacks. many people have you sold on that thing? I'm not going to say style. World domination. So you're you're yes. You're I'm Ignite selling talk. a book. I'm I'm selling a book. It's a 137 step program for killing a community based uh, sort of software or any kind of community based effort. Actually, are you here to to kill open source bridge? Yes, actually, that's my entire point of being here. In fact, it. I managed to sneak my way into this, and now I'm not going to get off camera until everyone here buys my book. How much is it? Oh, shit. John. That would have been a really good thing to do is come up with a price for... Well, that's probably what... Because I haven't sold any yet, actually. I, there were not, not a single person has bought my book. And it's probably night. because I... Haven't put a price Well, I haven't point. actually started selling it. Have you written it yet? Oh, damn. You see, this stuff is supposed to be automatic. You know, I mean, in this day and age... You'd think I mean, that you could just why would it? I? Why would I have to write a book? I mean, that should just be automatic, shouldn't it? Yes. If yeah. I had my way, well, that's I, a good. That's a good point. I haven't actually written the book. 
Um, yeah, but it but it is a good. It's a simple program. Maybe it's only 137 steps. So that's good. You, you know, nobody's you bought just, it though. Each step could be one word, and then it would just take a, like a year to write it. That's how long it takes to write 137 words, right? Is it? I have no idea. I've never written a that. A third many of a words word a day. That's yeah, that works. Right. Um, so, in all seriousness, before we get to the last question, which is serious, that last question we do we need to discuss because yeah. different. Yes, it makes a difference. So, why are you at Open Source Bridge, and how long have you been involved in Open Source? I've been involved in Open Source since I was about 12 years old, and I'm 38. Jeez, yeah. man. Yeah, it's pretty incredible. That's a long time. I can't actually fathom that being here. Yeah. I used to write games for my friends mm-hmm. on a TI-99 4A. I have no idea what that is. <laughs> it's an old computer. Well, I know it's an old computer, That's like but I have before no point of reference. It's like one of those... It's like when computers were the size of this room. Late 70s, I think, early 80s. Did it have tapes? Yeah. Okay. It, well, it had these big kachunk things. Yeah. It did have a tape drive, though. Yeah. I had a, I stored a lot of stuff on a tape, like a cassette tape that you like plug into the side of this thing. So it's there's huge, huge connections. So there's no sense in asking you how you became involved in open source because it's just what you became involved in. You well, were both yeah, adult. yeah, geek, yeah. Yeah, and you just stuck with it. Yeah, it it always just seemed to be the the community that I was involved in and the people that I hung around with. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, before we get on to that last important question, what's going on with them? Um, word blogs. That, notice that's not on there? <laughs> I know. We were supposed to have a <laughs> talk that didn't happen because mm-hmm. they just had way too many good talks yeah. for open source. There's a ton of, but you know, um, there's Friday. There is Friday. Um, so your next guest, I... Okay, so anyway, we were I supposed to have a talk. I know who is one of the next because she won't tell me okay you're not su- i'm not supposed to tell you that anyway. it's surprise well, the host day okay so, so one of my next guests we, where we were working on a code sprint but i kind of dropped the ball because i was working on an actual company your thoughtful snacks no no this is this is hydro for real this is okay. yeah and like an actual real okay try to do something good company yeah. um so I kind of dropped the ball on the code sprint. So we, our plan was, you know, it's running right now. Yeah. Um, but the plan that we talked about at the last code sprint, which was very successful, um, was to have another one and then launch in conjunction with OS Bridge, which maybe I dropped could, the ball on. Maybe you could launch in <laughs> conjunction with OS Bridge next year. Uh, let's, let's let's hope, hope that it would be point. just slightly delayed from OS Bridge yeah. this year. Yeah, that would be nice. <laughs> yeah, maybe you know um, for a nice. It's running. We need party. there. There's a few things that we need to do that Bill, the guru, would be much better at. I saw him in the hall earlier. Oh, he is here. I, I saw him. He was sitting at a table out, yeah, on the hallway. Oh, I didn't see him. Right? And I yelled, "Hi, Washi!" He pretended to ignore me. But he took pictures. I know he's been here because he's been in this room taking photos at some point. Nice. I didn't he's see him. He's a big photo poster. He is. I, I, he always posts the best photos of Strange of Live stuff. And I was like, when were... I didn't even see you. <laughs> Just snuck in here. All right. So we've got one last very, very important question. Um, what kind of gin for gin and tonics? You know... Okay, so there's someone from the audience yelled out Tangare. That was my previous gin. Um, actually, Gordon's usually because we're broke. But when, when we have the choice, we will go for Tangare. Except that recently, we did reach the beach, the bike ride from Portland to Pacific City. And while we were out there, we drove up and down and we visited the Newport we visited Newport and we went to the oh. Rogue Brewery uh-huh. and the Rogue Distillery. Oh, yeah. And Rogue Distillery makes a spruce gin that is to die for. Dr. Normal, remember I told you I wanted to go to Newport in like a week or two? Uh, uh yes. <laughs> We're so going to Newport <laughs> yes. and I'm so getting spruce gin. You have to take the Rogue okay. Distillery tour, which is basically involves you sitting at a bar mm-hmm. while the distiller feeds you drinks and tells you how he makes stuff and you don't have to walk anywhere because the distillery is right behind you. It's a, the whole building is less it's smaller than this room. So you're at the beach and they give you gin. <laughs> yes. For free. Oh my god. 
<laughs> like that. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, the Rogue Rogue Distillery. Uh, outside, I didn't even know they had one, but we just happened to be there, and they make a spruce gin, and they make a pink spruce gin, which is the spruce gin aged in Pinot Noir casks. So they just take the old Pinot Noir casks after they're done with them. Yeah, and they just age the gin in those. Yeah. How would they be in a, you know, uh, Dr. Normal, he loves a good gin and tonic, but I'm a martini girl at heart. How would they, how would they measure up for a martini? Okay, I'm embarrassed to say that I don't remember the alcohol in martinis. Gin. It is gin? Well, there. I've never had a martini. I only, like, it's a gin and tonic. That's all. Next time you're at my house, you're going to have a dirty dry gin martini. I, I will have whatever you feed me at your house. Um. I like gin martinis. Sorry. Some people, my entire family, gin martinis, except for my brother, who is the black sheep, and he, uh, vodka martinis. He's the only one that drinks vodka martinis. Uh, uh, every once in a while, Dr. Normal will ask for a vodka martini, and I will shun him, but I will give him a vodka martini. And I believe that Crunchy Sue also is a vodka martini drinker, although she does not like pimentos in her olives. I have great martini pretension. So... I have respect for vodka martinis now after talking to the Rogue Distiller Mm -hmm. because I know how they make gin. Mm -hmm. Do you know how they make gin? In a bathtub with juniper berries? No. They take (laughs) vodka and they redistill it with a bunch of stuff like cucumbers and spruce and juniper. Yes. It's that stuff. So a vodka martini is kind of like. The traditional martini is a gin martini. Okay. Um, Actually, traditionally, it would be half gin and half vermouth. I like a dry martini, which means that you would only put a tiny bit of vermouth. So I don't, I don't know how they would be with martinis. Yeah, I, I, I know. But it's, try. it's seriously good gin. All right. I'm and, gonna... okay, they make whiskey. One last thing. They make whiskey that they can't keep on the shelf. And they take dead guy ale without mm-hmm. the hops mm-hmm. and distill it and make whiskey. So yeah. it's just no hops, distill, whiskey? It's it's just dead guy ale. You distill that, and it turns into rogue whiskey. And it's really good. Like this has been you can a just very drink it. Experience. It's disturbingly. I know exactly sweet. what I'm doing when I go on vacation next yeah. week. So, dead guy, I mean, rogue distillery. Rogue distillery. Yeah. Is it by the Rogue Ale House? It is basically across the parking lot from the main. The main road. Oh, brew, from the big row one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because they've got the little restaurant. Oh restaurant right. No. Brewery. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's across the across the bridge. I know next where to it the is. Big, yeah. I know exactly yeah. where it is. Yeah. You gotta go. All right, John. It's been good to have you on. Walk right over there. I will walk and sign I will sign the board because I do not want to chase you down again. <laughs> Thank you, John. Oh, John. <laughs>